this lesson, we're going to go ahead and talk about packages and imports. And to get started, we're first going to go and right click on our package name. And we're going to create a new Python file. And we're just going to call this utils. And of course, you can put whatever name you want there. I'm just going to use this one for the example. And inside here, we're going to create a function called say hello. We're going to add some documentation, it says hello to the console. And finally, we're going to add a print statement that says, hello there. So now we have a function inside the utils. Now, something nice about Python is that you don't have to keep everything in a single script. We don't have to insert it here immediately to use it. We can refer to something that's called importing. So to import from a package, we have to use the keyword from and then we have to insert the package name, such as utils and what we want to import, such as say hello. Now inside here, we can just go ahead and say hello from our main file. And it's going to work just as if we had created it inside main.py. And let's pretend we have a lot of functions inside here, like say underscore goodbye, and we're just going to add pass. Now pretend we have a lot of functions in there. It's going to be a lot of effort to import each one. So they also have this concept of importing everything and to import everything, you just add an asterisk. Now we can go ahead and say hello and say goodbye just by referring to them. It was that simple. We imported everything we needed from utils. Another way to import is just to type in import utils. And just like that, we can actually refer to utils by typing utils and using the dot notation to refer to the function name. This makes it a bit easier to understand where we're getting the function from, but it can look a bit more messy in the long run. So we're just going to go ahead and type in from utils import say hello. And we're going to add a comment that says imports specific functions. And we're just going to call say hello. Next, we can go ahead and import a package that is part of Python. And this one is going to be used for generating random numbers. So we're going to go ahead and type in import random, which is a built in package. And this time we're going to give it an alias, which means we can use it with a shorter name. So by using as we can give it any name we want, it can be Rand, it can be Rabina, it can be any name we want to give it. To keep this short, I'm just going to provide an R and then we can go ahead and create a variable called random number, which is going to equal R. And by referring to R and the dot notation, we're going to get all of the functions that come with random. And what we're interested in for this example is random range. And inside here, we're going to say we want a number between zero and 10. And since we don't want zero to be included, we're going to add plus one. Then we can go ahead and type in print random and the random number. And when we run the program, we're going to get a random number such as nine or five or six or three and so on. We were able to use this package just by using dot notation with the alias that we have provided. And let's go ahead and make one more example. So from math, we are going to import everything. So as I said earlier, we can just go ahead and create a variable and now we can use math directly. Although of course, this is going to be a bit more confusing because we don't know where these functions come from. So sometimes it's nicer just to have the dot notation. But now that we imported math, we can go ahead and use stuff such as square roots. Plus, let's go ahead and say the sign of two. Now we can go ahead and use these functions that are part of the math package and we can print the result. Now I also want to go over very quickly how we can add packages that are not part of the default Python program, such as math is part of Python, random is part of the default Python program. And there are so many packages out there that do lots of cool things that are not part of this vanilla Python program. And to actually install them, we're going to have to go to terminal. And inside here, for example, we're going to use something called pip, which should be already installed on your PyCharm program. So just to verify that you have pip installed, go ahead and type in pip install requests, which is a very popular module in Python. If you see it's loading and if you see it's downloading items, 
that it means you have successfully installed pip. Otherwise, it's going to require a bit more configuration. But as soon as we've installed a package such as requests, we can go ahead and import requests, as you can see, as RQ. And this is a package that was installed from an external source. It's a very popular package that we can now use anywhere we want by referring to RQ dot whatever kind of methods it gives us, such as get. So that covers just about everything I had to teach you about imports and packages. In the next lesson, we're going to be looking at how we can handle errors and make sure our program doesn't crash every time we make an error.